Hi guys, today we are going to be making this simple but not so exciting animation in DaVinci Fusion and then we're going to restylize it to look like this. It's not award winning but it will teach you about 3D Infusion and it will also teach you about the power of the 3D Duplicate node which I absolutely adore. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll need is a Fusion composition. So come up to your media pool, right click and hit create a new fusion composition. So I'm going to call this petal two. And I'm going to change the length to about 15 seconds by going here. Then just hit in create. Once you've done that, drag it into the timeline um, and then hover over it like that. And then right click and hit open in the fusion page like so. Here in fusion, the first thing you need to do is bring in a background node, drag it across like that. Clicking on the background node, go over to the right hand side and change the alpha all the way down to zero like that. So all the tools we need for animation sit right here within Fusion. So we need a Shape 3D, we need a Merge 3D, we need a Camera 3D, a Light 3D and a Render 3D. Let's connect those all together. Once you've got them connected together, the Render 3D allows us to take the 3D world and combine it into the 2D world. So we need to take that and connect it across like so. Now, one thing I like to do is actually, I'm gonna bring in another uh, Merge 3D. And the reason for that is I like to keep all my objects um, connected to one Merge and cameras and lights to another. It just makes my life a bit more simple. So if I click on that shape 3D and go up to the right hand side, you'll see it's come in as a plane. We need it to be a sphere. So just click here and take it down to sphere like that and everything goes white. Why does it go white? Why does it go white? Well, it's a simple reason. If we click on the camera and put it in the left, uh, the, uh, left hand window, I'm gonna click here and go top view like this. Zoom out, control, middle mouse, if I just grab the camera and pull it back, in the right hand window what you'll see is there's our sphere. Essentially our camera was sitting in the same place as our sphere. It needed to be about there. That looks good to me. Let's just zoom in on that sphere. If we go in you can see it's actually not perfectly, it's not really smooth. And we can actually smooth it out. And the way you do that is clicking on the object, come over to the right hand side and you see here where it says base subdivision, height subdivisions. Just crank that up until it's a bit smooth. Actually, let's rename it. So clicking on the tool, we're gonna to hit F2, we'll call it Sphere. Right, now we need to create our petal. And the way we do that is we come up to our toolbar again and we're gonna grab a Shape 3D. We're gonna connect it in like that. We're gonna hit F2 on that one and we're gonna call it Petal. Now, when we come across to the right hand side, you'll see it's coming as a plane again. What we need it to be is a cylinder and there's our cylinder, but we can't see it in the right view or the left view. I've got it selected in the left window here, but we're not seeing it. And the reason for that is we need to go over to the right and hit caps bottom and top and it will put an end on uh, each end of the, uh, of the cylinder here so we can see it. We need to resize that. So we're going to go across to the transform tab just here. What we'll do is we'll go down to here where it says scale, uncheck X, Y, Z. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play with the X like that, which is a good shape, but I don't like the height. So let's bring down, I believe it's the Y. Look at that. Yeah, all the way down like that. The other thing I'm going to do is actually change its color because it's the same color as the sphere. But let's just click on material here and let's just give it a, uh, a nice turquoise color. We'll also move it out of the way by clicking here. And now you can see that our petal is actually quite big, so we need to resize that down. The other problem we're having with it, it's quite jaggy again, so let's fix that. So clicking on the petal, come over to the right hand side, go to controls, and again, increase the base subdivisions and the height subdivisions like that. We also need to decrease its uh, height because it's still quite thick. So go back to the transform tab and let's just lower that right down as soon as we can get it. Keep going. You may need to hold the control key when you're doing that, guys, because it really is sensitive. So that's about right. Now to resize that down to, to be more appropriate for the sphere, I'm actually going to use a transform 3D. So clicking on the petal, 
hit shift space bar, transform. We're going to use this one here, transform 3D like that. The reason I'm using that is because it's just so much simpler to resize things. So if I go here and resize, you can see it's a lot better. Now, one of the things you'll notice is, is that the center or the pivot point for our, our petal is right here. So if I rotate that, it's going to rotate it from that point. And I really need it to be in the center of the sphere. So let's just um, unplug the sphere for a minute. Can you see this black line here? I need it to be about there. So the best way to do that is clicking on the petal, come over to the right hand side, come down under the transform, see where it says pivot just here. Let's just move it off in the X and see what happens. Wrong way, it's that way there. Now let's put our sphere back. That's pretty good. So let's bring that pivot point back a little bit. That's about good. And then what we can do is go up to the translation just here and just move it in like that probably a bit too close so let's go to this x again and move it off and then move it back till it's in the center and i've done it again it's too big come back a little bit you swine there we are about there right so we've created our petal let's give it some rotation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to frame zero go to the transform tab just here let's find out which one rotates it so if i rotate it in the x Oh, that's actually the one we need. So you've got the X, the Y, and the Z. We only need it in the X. So what we're going to do is, uh, on frame zero, on the X, we're going to hit the keyframe just there. We're going to move forward, say, 40 frames. And then we're going to change that to minus 360 and hit enter. Let's play that back. Very cool. Now let's make it loop. So clicking on that transform, come up to your spline control tab just to the top just here. I'm going to click on the transform, come over here, make sure zoom to fit is selected. Come down to the toolbar at the bottom, hit select all, and then go across to this one here that says set loop. Et voila, it's now spinning all the time. So the next question is, is how did I get all the uh, petals to go around the sphere? And that's actually really easy. What we're going to do is select these nodes, bring them up a little bit. Clicking on this transform just here, we're going to hit shift space bar and we're looking for a duplicate node. And make sure you've chosen this one, which is the duplicate 3D. We're going to add that. Clicking on the duplicate node, we need to come over to the right hand side and we've got, it says we've got two copies, but they're in the same position at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to 18 copies and let's just play with the rotation and see what that does so it's not the x is it the y y could work what about the z it's the z isn't it that's what we need so if you think about it we need it to go around the sphere so it's 360 degrees divided by 18 is 20 so on this z axis here we need to change that to 20 like that and now when we play that back all our leaves rotate together isn't that lovely? Let's do some texturing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this merge just here. We're going to click on pass through lights. We're going to go to this merge here, hit pass through lights, and then we're going to go to the renderer. We're going to turn it from software renderer to hardware renderer. We're going to enable lighting and shadows like that. When we do that, everything goes black. And that's because we need to play around with the light. So let's come over to this light just here. Now, as you can see, I put it in the left-hand window. Again, it's occupying the same space as the sphere. So control middle mouse to zoom in out. And if I pull that out like that, you'll see on the uh, right-hand window, everything starts to light up. Let's change a couple of settings. What we're gonna do is clicking on the light. We're gonna go to the transform section first and we're gonna go down and hit use target. And what that does is if I go into the left hand window and now move that light, you'll see that it always focuses on the sphere. Now let's go to the controls tab and change it from decay type to linear like that. Then what we can do is go up, increase the intensity. Let's make it three, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's not bad. We're also going to change the cone angle, which is this width here, and it's basically the degrees of light that go out. So let's just increase that. 
and we're going to increase the penumbra which I can't pronounce, but basically it's how soft the edge of the shadows are. So let's do that as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this spotlight just here, right click on it, hit copy, control B, paste. There we are, and we're going to connect that in like that. Now both those lights are sitting in the same place. So I need to come to this top view over here and let's just move it over to the other side. Like that. Now if we go to the front view by right clicking here, we can see that our lights are actually sitting in the in the center just here. So let's just grab this light and take that one up. Go to the other light and take that one down like that. So we've got a bit of a difference like that. Right, now what we can do is we can add another transform. So I'm just going to select these nodes here, just move them out a little bit. I'm going to click on this Merge 3D here, go Shift Space Bar. We're looking for another Transform 3D, which is that one there. And we're going to add that. On this Transform, what we're going to do is going to go to Frame 0. Let's just check which angle we're going for. Yeah, we're going for that one. So it's the Y angle that we're going for. So to reset it, just double click on the Y here, like that. We're going to create a keyframe on the Y. What does the X look like, actually? And the X, actually. Let's do it on the X as well. So let's just reset that one. Double click on the X, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll go to frame 100. And on the Y, we'll make it go minus 360. And then we'll move forward 50 frames. And on the X, we'll make it go 360 like that. Now we need to go up to the spline tool because we need it to be looping. So let's go up here. Make sure you hit uh, uh, this one here, zoom to fit to make sure all the keyframes are in. Go down to this one that says select all keyframes. And then what we'll do is we'll use this one here that's set loop. Now, when we play that back, so cool. I'm just going to increase the um, the color of the sphere because I think it's a bit too dark. So let's just click on that sphere, go over to materials. And what we can do is go down to the specular just here. Let's just play with the intensity, see what that does. Exponent. There we are, it's the exponent and the intensity. Let's change the color of that as well. Can we make it yellow? What does yellow look like? That will do, that will do. Let's move the camera out a little bit more as well because it's just clipping the edges there a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the camera, come over to the left hand view, right click here and go top view. And then what we'll do is just move it out just a little bit like that. And now when we play, yeah, we're, we've got plenty of room. Right, so we've done our animation and it's not looking particularly brilliant. Um, I'm going to do one more thing before I show you how I did the that. Uh, black and white effect. On this petal over here, what I'm going to do is click on that, go to material, and I'm going to go to here where it says uh, opacity, and I'm just going to bring that down a little bit like that. And if you look, it's given as a, a kind of a glassy look. If you go down to the specular, you can also play with that and the exponent to get more of a, yeah, that's what we're after right there. Right, so we're nearly finished. The only thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add a floor so coming to this transform here, I'm just going to select it, come over to the toolbar and hit um, Merge 3D because we need to add another Merge 3D. Making sure the merge is selected, come up and add an image plane like that. Clicking on the image plane, F2, we're going to call it Floor. Now in the left hand window, uh, we can see our floor is actually within inside the sphere and we need it to, to be outside of the sphere and obviously a lot bigger. So Clicking on the floor, come over to the right hand side. First thing we're going to do is go down to scale. We're going to increase the scale. Let's put 20 like that. And look at that. It's actually now gone halfway through our sphere. So we're in the right view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back a little bit like that. So it's out of that. And we need to rotate it. And how we do that is clicking on the X just here. Let's make that 90 degrees like so. And it's vanished. Where is it gone? Let's move it down. Now you'll notice that the floor is completely black and that is not what we want. We actually need this to be minus 90, like that. Now the reason it was black is because of something called normals. 
and that's basically the faces of, uh, of the object and if they're in the wrong direction they'll give you the wrong look so just be careful of that if you have that problem there's your answer right there right so to get the black and white look what we need to do is we need to come to our render 3d click on that we need to come across to the output channels just here and go down and make sure the uh, Z normals and object ID are um, ticked like that. Then what we need to do is make sure render select a shift space bar. And we're looking for something called a ambient occlusion, which is this one here. Now what an ambient occlusion node does is it basically uh, where it sees tight creases, it creates more dirt. If you've used Blender or Houdini, um, you, you'll know it from that. I'll see if I can get a demonstration to put in the actual uh, tutorial for you. Now, uh, in order for the ambient occlusion to work, we need to take the output from the camera and put it in like that. And when we put it in the window, we get this. Isn't that cool? What we need to now do is go across to the right hand side and if you play with like if you lower the kernel radius and the lift you can start getting the look that you're after let's add a background actually because uh, that would help us immensely so what i'm going to do is drag in a background node just here and connect it in like that with the background selected i'm going to come over to the uh, right hand side and change the color to white now we've lost everything and the reason for that is this background is coming as a foreground. We know that because this line is green so click on this merge, right click and hit swap input and there we are. I just want to make sure that the petals don't go through the floor, which uh, they're not. Now the other cool thing about ambient occlusion nodes is you can actually have more than one. You, you, you don't just need one. So I can click on this ambient occlusion node Go shift space bar and add another like that. Make sure the camera is linked into it. Go across to the right hand side and again play with the lift, the gamma to achieve that look that you're after. And when we play that back, we get this. How cool is that? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The uh, 3D is not as scary as you think it is. And the duplicate node really, really is powerful. This animation here was completely done using the duplicate node. It only uses uh, two keyframes. Uh, let me know in the comments, by the way, if you want me to show you how I did this. Um, if you want to download this project and any other project uh, from my website, just hit the subscribe button, go to the link in the description, put in your email address, but don't worry, I hate spam, so I won't be spamming you. And like I say, you can download this project or any other project that interests you. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. I love reading them and I'll see you in the next one.